Hello everybody, this is BSCAT100 and welcome back to some more Hive Swap. In the previous episode, we had made it down here to the basement where our brother suggested that we turn back on the power. In this episode, it's time to find out how we can do that. If you like what you see, leave a like down below, comment if you have anything to say. Subscribe to me if you haven't already, and share with your friends so you can join in on this adventure. It's a machine designed to take your clothes and wash them. We call it a washing machine. It serves its purpose admirably. On the rare occasion a human being is willing to cooperate. All is, all is neat and folded. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. This is obviously dirty. Your pa brought this home as a souvenir. Nobody inside it. Some kind of metaphor, you guess? Eh, you're not sure if you want to start down the road of analyzing your life as if it were, were a work of fiction. Oh, wait. Souvenir from your pa after his trip to Hawaii. He's been exploring the Pacific a lot lately for some reason, or so he mentioned offhandedly a few years ago. You assume he's still doing that due to you not having any fresher data, or particularly caring one way or another where the hell he is. I'm not even sure. More blue ladies? Pa loves his blue lady portraits so much he keeps redundant backups scattered around. Because it's okay if you ignore something supposedly precious to you, as long as you're paying attention to something kind of similar in another location, right? You decide not to pull out on that psychological thread because you have important work to do. And who needs that crappy old blowhard anyway? I think, I think we get it. Joey does not like her dad at all. It's a taxidermy narwhal. Your pa brought it back with him from the Arctic. He sure does get around. Like if, luckily for him, he has this big house to dump off animals, the animals he murders, and the kids don't want, he doesn't want to raise. Jesus. Your babysitter sometimes cracks into, pa, into your pa's special reserve, and she tends to do it down here, so you and Jude don't see it. You aren't sure what to say about it, or if you have any business saying anything at all. Maybe it's because <clears throat> you grew up in a house where nobody really cooks, but you have no idea what to do with these cooking implements. Food, the great mystery. That's a Betty Crocker symbol. Don't you, don't you even dare pull that on me. Forgotten skiing stuff. No basement is complete without it in your extremely limited experience. With your pa's strange affinity towards the Betty Crocker brand ever apparent, this musty old junk mainly consists of all sorts of cooking implements, ranging from familiar to the enigmatic. Right now, you can tell. Right, really now, you can tell what a whisk is for, but some of the stuff looks downright unethical. It's also in your way. You can't reach the circuit breaker. Um. <coughs> I do want to make a quick. Uh, correction to what I was saying in the last episode about the pictures um, that picture was of uh, um, uh, I can't think of it right now oh for fuck's sake General, uh, uh, Colonel Sassaker uh, not of of dad Egbert and this just proves that it is <coughs> indeed Colonel Sassaker or at least it helps prove it a little bit more Trying to move one box and the whole pile is liable to come tumbling down on you. You need to find some way to, to get them all down moving at once. Just shake them up somehow. Controlled tumble. That's the ticket. I think we found the circuit breaker. <coughs> Threw the boxes away with your fanciful footwork. Fancy footwork. Now just give the breaker tug or whatever. You flip the breaker and. Uh oh. The 
path to the circuit breaker is pretty clear now. It's only really stopping you from, you know, doing something like that. Uh oh. Strife. You've got no choice of beating, chance of beating on this thing. You got to get away. Step on it. How? I don't. How do you strife? Oh, shuffle and scoot. Let's do lunge. Check, please. Graceful abscond. Oh! Prima abscond, Joe. Wow. Step up. Oh, wow. So that's the strife system in this game. That's actually really cool. Tell you doing, you doing, uh, you doing a solid stuff and pulling the horses over. Give back light only to fast away. Just got a hypothetical for a girl. Give stuff on the over. No, it was me criming you, Jude. That snake monster is down in the basement, by the way. I managed to get past him, but we'll probably need to deal with that at some point. So you're gonna go to the clerk, do some what? This is already established here, we're gonna set you over. Hey, thanks. I think. Do you want to say you played the last little? Wait, what? Okay, Jack. I was gonna play it. Give me a little over and up. Uh, I'm assuming we can't. Maybe. Gotta shake this mummy, Napoleon, guy right out of his busy aesthetic. Which would be one way to get past him, if not me. But it would make an awful mess. Oh, you never dance with soldiers. They just steal your heart away and then leave you on a three. <laughs> oh, jeez! Fax machine can be used to send fat facsimiles. Oh, s s facsimile? F Wait, facsimile miles. Fax miles. Or, or whatever you stick in into it. Whoever has a fax machine, it's very high tech. Alright. You, you're even out of dog food? Things have written, gotten really desperate. I guess you can't blame your babysitter for running off to the store. Uh, to the store for groceries at what was respectfully the worst possible time. A shaker full of seasonal, seasonal's magic spice mix. Your babysitter is a terrible cook, but she dumps this stuff all over everything, and it actually tastes pretty good. Maybe it is really magic. We got the magic spice mix. Of course, everyone knows there's no such thing as magic. It's all faked with chemicals and stuff. Still, those chemicals are delicious. <coughs> the sink is full of dirty dishes. Someone should clean those up. No way. No way. You did them last time. It's Jude's turn now. You know what? After he completely ditched you for the treehouse earlier, maybe it can be Jude's turn for quite some time. Uh, yes, okay. I'm just trying to see if there's... You're not sure, what, sure why the trash is piled next to the fridge. Even animals know better than to let their food fraternize with their waste. Okay. And that's it for the kitchen.
Okay, that's not what I meant to do. This should probably be in a museum. I want to see if there's anything... Um, okay, that goes to the rest of the... We'll, we'll explore that after getting through the trophy room. I want to see if there's anything else. It doesn't look like it. Oh, wait. Another blue lady, huh? <clears throat> A lot of these ladies were apparently your mom's friends. You should look up to them sometime. Or look them up sometime. You may uh, avoid mentioning that your pa has blue-only portraits made of them, although if they were friends with your mom, they must have had to deal with your pa on occasion, so it would probably come as no surprise. Strife time! Tabardize! Main roars. Y'all ready for this? Ah! I'll fucking beat you over the head with it. Light on your feet! Light bright. Y'all ready for this? Choose your battle. Okay, so he has a way to counter that. Spice to meet you. Pepper luck next time. Okay, so everything here. All right, what about some some treats? Opening course. Flip your eyes on the prize. So wait, did that do anything? What about the pods? Passion, orange, guava. Fruitless endeavor. Oh, this is really cool. I mean, clearly I have no idea of what what I'm doing. Oh, he countered that. <coughs> I don't think there's a way I can... Oh. Two to tango. Okay, so I can't run away from this one. Batter up! What am I supposed to do here? Oh, he really enjoyed that pet treat. Maybe you don't need to fight him after all. Oh, we need to feed him. Anyone for seconds? Make mine a double. All right, big guy, time for dessert. Treat to a pulp. All right, monster inflicted death scene averted. You are unbelievably stressed out right now. Congratulations, you have attended to rung two in your Echeladder. Attain rank of tail wagging Tyro. Max HP increased by 12, muscle increased by 7. Congratulations, you ascended to rung 3 of your Esha ladder. Attain rank of minim, uh, Minute Mammal Mender. Dexterity increased by 2, grace increased by 6, leverage increased by 5. You've ascended to rung 4. Pepper Patterer. Mastered Noggin Bump. Hubris increased by 4, courtesy decreased by 2. So where is the key? In his desk or something? Okay, but like, where did you leave it? 
I just had to lure a hungry monster out of here with the treats, and I'm not sure how much time I have before brother sister conspiracy capers. For oh, for how much time I have for brother con sister conspiracy capers before it comes back? This is exactly the kind of thing you wish was in your house. Shit. One moment. I'm gonna put myself offline. Um. You'd like to put something in those sockets. And what? Also, wait. Why do you want to do that so much? That's weird. This is a katana! You have no idea what uh, what to do with one. Wait! Maybe you just throw it away. Okay. It's not that 11-11 has been as... And it has been as long as you can remember. You could fix it, but why bother? It's not like you're going to make a habit out of strolling over to the voice room in the house time. You've never been entirely clear on what's going on in this tapestry, but it looks like it, it looks intense. Just look at that fire-breathing serpent beast at the bottom, and that red-eyed figure on the throne. What's their deal? This, uh, whatever it is, depicts some heroes conversing with huge monsters. Do the monsters help them? Kill them? You prefer to imagine everyone gets out okay, but you know life is really that kind. You, uh, you got nothing. You feel unqualified to comment. <laughs> Alright. It is an alabrie, some a folk art monster from Oaxa, Mexico. Uh, wait, Oaxaca, Mexico, carved out of wood from the copal tree. This little thing used to creep you out really bad until your babysitter suggested you learn more about it. You found out they're based on monsters that an artist saw in his dreams, and ever since then, he seems a lot more friendly. As if being dead weren't bad enough, your pa replaced his eyes with some creepy glass orbs. The light refracted in those f uh, faceted stairs give you the creeps. But are you crazy? Is there some light reflecting off his antler too? Maybe it bears closer inspe inspection. Just did you just put a, a jostle a bit? What's your deal, Buckaroo? Neep is limbly as a deer is the highest challenge of, of the art. An alive deer, you mean. The poor guy's seen nimbler days. All the actual meat was removed for, from this poor fellow long ago. He's just thrown a frame. This noble creature spurns spurns your batteries. Look at that huff arched up all spurn like. That's a spurning huff if you've ever seen one. Frozen in his posture of supreme dignity, the deer doesn't deign to notice you bugging him with your garbage. You beckon the deer forward with the tasty pet treat. He's incapable of resisting temptation, but he's also incapable of movement, so he stays put. Stales mate. Stale mate. Your pot. Your pa's love of globes knows no bounds, but you don't recognize any of the continents on this one. You'd have a better idea of what it is you were looking for, is uh, looking at if you could read these extremely scribbly labels. All you can make the sense of is the X mark. Could it be indicate treasure? You spin the globe and watch the white beams rake across the surface of the globe. He 
you need to move this thing, just give it a spin. No rhythmic stomps here. Maybe you can incorporate this inaccurate globe into uh, into a ballet about globes? With a bunch of dancers dressed as globes doing pirouettes with s to simulate spinning. Yeah, that'd be really re revolutionary. Really now. Seems like somebody, uh, somebody sliced this big fella's hand off. Luckily, he's a lefty. It's a little, a little out of season. It's still disabled, or were you simply the mess has, has been changed? Obviously, something to do with this deer. This is um Horus, you think? You're not up on your e Egyptology. Am I missing something? to take a look around the house again. A universal remote definitely sounds like something that would be useful in your adventure. Set the powers out. Universal is probably disappointingly misleading. And who said that you were on an adventure anyway? So far, you haven't even left your house. Now you need them more than the remote does. Good old Pa. No, they're yours now. <laughs> oh, that's an achievement. That's really cool. Batteries. Handheld gaming device that you and Jude used to share. Or shares. He hogs it mostly, but that's alright since you got the console in your room. Uh, you have it on good authority that the batteries in this thing are A. Way too small for anything that may or may not currently need batteries. And B. Dead as a bag of doornails. There's also something else that I wanted to try anyway. You don't want to accidentally agitate Juice Pet. Okay. Come on, Joey. No, I had I, I believe I have everything. I did search everything pretty thoroughly. Alright. 
up to 11 11. Oh dear, oh dear. What do I do here? You got some really old ashes in there and a couple of nearly disintegrated hunks of charred wood. the solution so where's the key in his desk yeah assistance is, re is required dude know about keys. She should feel like a jerk. Why are you so mean to him? You wish you really did have a key secret. Wish it so hard. Where are you hiding the key, you smug noble jerk? Sprinkle the globe with spice. Uh-oh, the inhabitants of the fake planet. How will you respond to this new shift in the global market for exotic spices? How how will your now obsolete trade route uh, trade routes weather this prestigious prestigious prodigious miracle? And what of their heavy spice investment portfolios? You better hope they were very flexible. That did nothing but amusement. Best thing about this fake planet? No pogs! Oh yeah, you probably have no monsters either, which used to be a thing you could have said about the real planet that you live on. Not anymore, apparently. You're zero for two, real planet. Uh, what are the animals like on you, fake planet? Are they hungry for treats? You assume so. Animals always want treats, even fake ones, assuming, unlike poor animals living in this room, they're still alive, even fake alive. <laughs> you don't need batteries, but you get the feeling it might... It doesn't need batteries, but you get the feeling it might need something else, or maybe you don't, depending on how much you've heard, or how much you've been paying attention to a number of things, really. It doesn't need batteries. It runs on, uh, oh, the pendulum. You think? And those brass bars also do something, and you have to open the face sometimes. You're not big of a student on clockmanship, but you think this is all pretty much 100% accurate. For some, there's something about this key that reminds you of clocks, or at the very least, clockwork. Please refer, 
excuse me, keys are for, for opening, um, or for opening, for initiating, for unlocking, but also for locking, for finishing, for sealing, although those uses are much less exciting. What's the point of finding a weird old key just to lock something away? I need to interact with here. This fellow's already lost his right arm. You start stepping up at him, and he's right, likely to rattle the bits. You don't stand a chance of lifting this this burnished brute. Maybe uh, you could, uh, they could lift you. They could lift you, but between the hand on the floor and the, and the hand full of sword, you think you'll pass on the pass or whatever it was. Could re you could reset the pendulum in motion with the click of your heels, but something stops you. Clockwork. When set in motion, it isn't always easy to arrest. Are you sure you're ready for the consequences? <laughs> Still, though, the pendulum reminds you of an exercise. A grand battlement and, and cliché. It sounds impressive, but it's mostly kind of just swinging your leg back and forth. It occurs to you that this could also describe a lot of ballet terms. Sounds like a sure way to get old ashes everywhere, including in your mouth, and also dirty your tap shoes. Really a win-win. Okay, fine. There's just not room in there for you to maneuver. You try to ply in there, and you're and you'll be picking teeth out of your out of inside the chimney. Of course, doesn't look like he's in the mood for tap dancing. Very fragile and culturally significant, you can't take any chances. <laughs> if you were going to hold something while you tap dance, it'd be a cane. Just like the great Fred Astaire, who you know who you know as a phenomenal tap dancer and you literally know nothing else about it. Ballet is the most elegant and demanding type of dance. Maybe katanas are the same, but for swords. <sighs> Look, if you're going to lay it out all on the line, ballet rules and you really don't give a flying frog about katanas. You were just trying to be nice. Tap dancing at this poor kitty is liable to shake its head right off the wall. Maybe onto those katanas, or maybe only one of them is a katana, well, Regardless, the juxtaposition of swords under a decapitated animal makes for a pretty ghoulish tableau. Yeah, wrong thing. This beautiful kitty was more graceful than you could ever hope to be. For all the good it did them. Ah, the grace of a bird and a god. That's you. Well, that got me something. You'd imagine what it'd be like if this monster were real, dancing gracefully on the winds with its spiny little leaf, leaf wings. Then you remember that there are, that there really are monsters fl flying around outside, and the whole flowery description of the monsters thing gets a lot less appealing. Wait a minute, it's a little out of season? <laughs> I can't believe that it took me this long to, to connect that. You give the main knight a sprinkle of dust right in the missing Vambrace. Time heals wounds, after all. <laughs> so 
will not have season. The idea of a battery-powered suit of armor fills your mind with visions of big armored machine knights loyal only to their queen, knowing no fear, utterly unstoppable. They aren't especially pleasant visions, so you stop visiting them. <laughs> Pogs, like suits of armor, are actually not all that common. Despite being all their respective eras you will probably be remembered for, you can just see it now. You're living in the Pog Epoch. I mean, he was offering that big kid he had a treat and it bit his hand off. He was kidding around, but it makes you feel better about the beautiful, noble animal you're posh at and decapitated. <laughs> Inside an empty suit of armor, and there's a good hiding place, or the first place someone would look. <laughs> you guess you never looked in there. Maybe it's not the first place. Heck, that thing could be full to the brim of secret treasures and answers, wild mysteries that you have no idea, and you never will. Do not tempt fate. You barely escape from that servant. You mean snake. You mean monster. It's just a monster. Snakes don't have legs. It has a ton of legs. Way more than you, even. You're more like a snake than it is. Okay, you've gotten away from your original point there. You're not going back down. Whatever's keeping this fellow from rotting, it seems he'll be... Uh... It seems to be doing the trick just fine on its own, but the minute he starts to go bad, you'll be ready to spice him. To spice him till he's fragrant. <laughs> you crank it all the way down and to stop that awful noise, you crank it a little harder and oops, might have broken it. Actually, you're okay with that. Being said, I think we're gonna end it off here. In the next episode of Hive Swap, I'll probably have figured out what to do, um, and then we'll do it. Simple as that. See you guys later.